Now, most modern wireless microphone systems use diversity technique for reception. What that means is there are two antennas and there are actually two receivers inside the receiving unit. And there's also a little switch inside that monitors the two receivers and switches between them depending on which one has the best signal. Now, a bit about why that is, if you imagine we put one antenna in space to receive in your church, the transmitter is moving about the stage, right? It's a person wearing a body pack or maybe holding a handheld wireless transmitter. As they move around, we know that the RF leaves that transmitting antenna and it gets to the receiving antenna multiple ways. It gets directly to the antenna, but it also reflects off different objects in the room. Many different paths happen. And what this can do is cause phase cancellation due to multipath. And that, that kind of gets a little bit deep to talk about, but the bottom line is a dropout. If we have phase cancellation line up just right due to these reflections arriving at our receive antenna, then the system can drop out and we don't want that. So the idea is that if this antenna is in one location and as the transmitter moves, a dropout would occur at this antenna due to phase cancellation, the reflections around the room. If the antenna were over here, it's unlikely due to a different space, a different location for the antenna, that we would have a dropout at exactly the same time. So by using two antennas with a little bit of space between them, we have a better chance of getting a clear reception. So that's the basic idea behind diversity reception. There are a few variations on it in different names like true diversity and antenna diversity, but the idea is multiple pickup or receive locations for antennas to minimize the likelihood of a dropout. When setting up a diversity receiver, we want to think about the spacing between our antennas. Now, most modern wireless microphones operate in the UHF range, which means frequencies in the megahertz, specifically about 500 to 700 megahertz. Uh, that means that the wavelengths are really short. And to give you an idea, at 500 megahertz, the wavelength is about two feet. That's, that's pretty close. So if we think about what a quarter wavelength is, that's about six inches. So the idea is that our antennas need to be six inches or more apart to get a good diversity effect. As the antennas get closer together or extremely close together, we don't get a good diversity effect because they're really, for all intents and purposes, in the same place in space. So we wanna spread them out a little bit. So when we're setting up a diversity receiver using the rod antennas that come stock, we put them on the back of the receiver. They're not made for remote mounting and we splay them with an angle between them, usually 90 degrees or something like that. We certainly don't want them parallel at any angle. The parallel, it just doesn't help. We get a better reception when they are at different angles. Now, if we're using an external antennas, we don't use the rod antennas that come with the receiver, but we use paddles or something like this, and we use extension cables to get them out and away from the receivers. Sometimes the receivers, again, might not be in a suitable receiving location, but the antennas can be with extension cables. In that case, we can actually spread the antennas more because they're not attached to the receiver. So sometimes it's good to experiment with placement, but at a minimum, we want to be a quarter wavelength. Typically, people will say a meter or two apart or more is a good general rule of thumb for UHF wireless microphones. Uh, in some applications, people put them on opposite sides of the stage, and that works out well.